There's always a choice. That moment the page turns, as pen meets paper, a fire alights. Does that spark draw us toward one another? Or does it kindle into blazing hatred? We may not be our ancestors, yet we are the result of their choices. And of the fires they had set, many still burn today. Herein lies our choice. Which embers do we feed? Will we assert the kinship of all people? Or stoke the flames of racial hatred? There's always a choice. I wanted to have an opportunity to be lightly guided through the process while still being able to take enough ownership to be able to look into areas that, again, I just didn't know. I wanted to form relationships with the campus community that could help me become more prepared to safely integrate these students into the community. Really, I have no recollection of anything about civil rights or equal rights, no teaching of it in the school system. It wasn't something that I grew up having any knowledge of whatsoever. I noticed a lot of racism in my school growing up and I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't know how to advocate for others. Um, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do. For some of our, our white Berea faculty and staff members, this is new to them. Literally, I feel like and when I learned when slavery happened, the civil rights movement happened, and we're here. By default of being an African American female, people would automatically think that I know everything about civil rights, and I don't. To see um, black and white faculty and staff members on the bus, we are modeling to our students what true interracial education is all about. When you're on the tour, there's time to pause and be at the museums and to learn, learn the material, learn from each other, learn from the movies. To reflect with my colleagues who are my friends and to hear their experiences and how that has changed and informed what they do. You know, I just don't think it would be the same at all if I were to just research this on my own. And when we think about the civil rights movement as we're on this tour, I realize that um, we are progressing in some ways, but it's almost like, you know, we, we did a U-turn and we're going back around because we haven't learned some of those deep, deeply rooted lessons of systemic racism and oppression in our country. White people have what seems to be a benefit of avoiding anxiety over racism, but that's not a benefit. I found myself really um, struck. I had a moment where I actually needed to, to sit with the, the emotions and sit with the reality of what I was, was seeing and feeling. Um, just this very impactful physical presentation of these, these memorials all around us. Just that like gut feeling as you start walking down the ramp and your you know your your head starts to look up because the sculptures are suddenly above you, like you were looking at someone who had been lynched and it just was um, I felt like someone had just punched me in the stomach and I was not prepared for that and I don't know that anyone could ever be prepared for that. The thought of it being a spectacle with thousands of people is just that is disgusting. It is, I will never, ever forget that feeling. It's, it's really emotional. There's a, there's a lot of horrible, terrible things that transpired, and a lot of people are dealing with it differently. 
putting yourself in these uncomfortable situations where you don't know everything. You don't know what's really going on. You don't have the full picture. And to get the full picture, you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. You know, I grew up in a small town in Kentucky that really didn't have very many African Americans. And I, I didn't think much about it when I was a kid. I just went and looked uh, in one of the, the digital displays at the first museum and saw that there was a lynching in my home county. As a therapist, I don't know everything. But there are times when I just need to pause and look into the soul of the person and just hear and then wait for the answer to come. Going to see the lynching memorial, I, I knew that there would be Kentucky counties and originally I was just looking for Simpson County where I grew up at. For me to walk across and see Whitley County and to see a name, George Gamble, on that monument, that memorial, that was another tough moment. It, it really makes it real when you see your name. But it, I guess it shouldn't come to a surprise that many of us could trace our lineage back and, and find um, moments in time where our own families have been um, totally destroyed um, by systemic racism and white supremacy. Seeing where some of those lynchings came from in Shelby County, I mean, Franklin County, I mean, uh, all throughout that area, I know that dirt. I know that land. That got me thinking and really brought it home. Even though that was 70, 80, in some instances 100 years ago, I felt such an innate connection there. Even though it's in the past, it's still it still has those roots and it still affects you in today's time. So this did not just happen to black people. This is, if you are, if you are a person that identifies as white and whether you have ever owned a slave or not, this happened to you as well. So you have George Floyd, police brutality. Breonna Taylor, police brutality. And I mean, and it goes on and on with, with these, with uh, police brutality and, and these killings. And no, I'm not against police, but I am against police brutality. Uh, and especially when it's with black and brown, I mean, it's with anybody. But you are killing my folks. My folks, I am a black woman, so I am very in tune to, you know, that could have been my brother, nephew, whatever, dad. I'm going to get on this bus and if while they may feel a pain that says don't get back off because you're just going to be back into another museum triggered again but yet they keep getting off. Uh, despite whatever system has been in place that perhaps on some level has been dysfunctional regardless as to who might want to continue to see things not get better you can't stop the collision from producing better right you just, you cannot. So if students and faculty just keep just one trip at a time feeding this information into themselves and just keep saying yes to the call, change has to come. I feel like this trip is just the beginning on this journey, but I feel like I have guidance now and I can prioritize this work. Just coming with people who were, um, who were African Americans, visiting these locations was powerful. Um, t for them in different ways. I, I just would not have been impacted the same way if I just looked up on the internet. I've been really trying to also think through the lens of my work at Grappalachia. I've been thinking about our population, our demographics, the folks that we tend to work with. We did a study a few years ago and, you know, our participants that we serve, we're a higher percentage of white folks who benefit from our program, then there are a, high, a percentage of white people in the region. And that is, I'm working really hard to address that because that is not okay. Having the website build more of that, that messaging in as part of its mission, I think is, is going to be important going forward. And in terms of marketing, uh, I believe we should be talking more about the, the civil rights tour and everything behind the, the, the history of the college and really talking to that and bringing that to other audiences. One of the things that we're really 
striving to do is to build the diversity not only in our students but also our faculty and staff and recognizing how important it is to, to have a community where people feel home and they feel they belong and they feel safe. And what if we can bring these messages and these experiences in ways that children can understand too um, so that they have a little bit more of a head start than some of us had growing up. It's also helped me see and do what I can to help eliminate even more unconscious bias when you're going through the advocacy process and you're, and you're advocating for the students in front of the admissions committee. It's good that we bring together diversity in our student body and I think we do have students who've never really never interact with anybody of a different ethnic group, mostly you know, from some of the really white areas of Appalachia. It's not enough just to bring people into proximity. I think we really need to also have a real uh, intentionality about how we uh, facilitate those experiences and those uh, um, opportunities. I'm looking forward to getting back to campus and knowing the names of these people who I've just respected kind of from a distance and felt kind of intimidated by. And now I know I'll be able to go into the Black Cultural Center, the Woodson Center, and Bell Hook Center, and, and even like other events on campus, because I don't feel so embarrassed anymore. So, you know, I have to say that it's one thing to stand in front of a classroom and to talk about systemic racism, um, to talk about how you value each student. But it's another thing to get on and off that bus every day with the intent to learn, to soak up the knowledge, and sometimes not to say anything, but just to listen. To listen to the plight of our struggles, just to listen. And it is my hope that something will, will, will spark and what has been learned on this trip will be discussed in classrooms. When policies are made, but by some of our high ranking administrators on this trip, maybe they'll think about some of the stories in this journey. They'll look around the table and they'll see who isn't represented and make some decisions to bring those individuals to the table. Because it's only when we sort of open ourselves up to those more difficult thoughts, those more difficult reflections, those more difficult connections that we can truly start to make progress in terms of how we relate to each other. And that's transformative for, you know, regardless whether we're thinking just about our workspace or whether we're thinking about our relationships with the student community at Berea College, um, whether we're talking about broader societal context and, and what we can bring to, to that as individuals and as a college. The more of us who are tooled up in this way um, it's only for the benefit of Berea College as a whole to bring us, to bring us forward to where, to where the college needs to go.